Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather. In this update, we're gonna be talking about more severe weather, December heat, flooding rains, and heavy snow. So if you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. Good morning, everyone. This is your December 12th update. And what we're taking a look at here is the overall storm reports for our major tornado outbreak that happened on Friday night into Saturday morning. And yesterday we had up to 32 tornadoes that were reported. But unfortunately, that number has almost doubled now as the National Weather Service is continuing to survey the damage. Now we're up to 58 tornado reports and it's going to take another several weeks because you realize the devastation that's happened with such a huge outbreak over nine states so it's going to take a while to process all the information and and the cleanup and everything else so i wanted to give you an update on where we stand with that but let's talk about the data for the week ahead. And it, we're pretty cold this morning. I mean, we had a pretty strong cold front that came through. It, it was clear skies, light winds, and allowed a lot of the areas that really hasn't seen uh, even the freezing weather like Dallas. They actually had their first official freeze of the season. It dropped down to 32 degrees at DFW Airport. That was actually three weeks behind normal. So this is not been a, a normal december whatsoever so we do have some chillier air to deal with this morning and it's feeling a lot like december's what's supposed to feel like but that's not gonna happen very long because we rapidly warm up but the good thing is for the cleanup efforts today and oh really over the next couple of days they're gonna have some really nice weather uh, the high pressure starts to build in you've got that's what allowed the temperatures to drop so dramatically last night as a lot of the areas, the winds turn calm and uh, they really rapidly change from what they were just 36 hours prior. So, but you can see there's not much to speak of for a good chunk of the country as we're drying out now, but we've got some critical fire dangers out here. This, this part of the country has been extremely dry. They just been missing a lot of the systems. And now that the winds have turned around, this area is extremely dry. You've got uh, uh, you know, lighter uh, humidity values and that critical fire danger is elevated up in the, in the Texas Panhandle region. But what we're gonna be watching this week is a developing trough that's gonna be diving in off the west. That's gonna bring much colder conditions and all the colder anomaly air predominantly out west but much needed rains coming in for uh, California. And even some parts are getting some heavy rain at, at that. So great mountain mountain snows are gonna be coming back in the picture out there, just adding to those totals, what you got last week. And as we continue into Monday, you can see for a good chunk of the country still high and dry, not much, to, not much going on, fairly, really nice weather to contend with. We do have a little small disturbance that's gonna be creeping up into su Southern Texas here, getting into Arkansas. This is very light rain. A lot of this is probably not gonna be reaching the ground, but heavy rain will be reaching the ground into Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, so that's some really much needed rain out there. And then the heavy snows come back for the mountain regions. And then once it gets into uh, portions of uh, Montana, we have some heavier snows out here for a lot of the ski ski uh, people out there that have been waiting for just a healthy snowpack. And so you're gonna be adding to those totals uh, what you got last week. So as we continue into Tuesday, where we do watch a, like a kind of a mini cold front that's gonna be coming down into uh, Iowa and port parts of the mid-Atlantic states in the Northeast. We do have that disturbance that's kind of creeping in from, from the South. That's just an indication of the, you know, the winds are turning around, some of the moisture's trying to get back into the atmosphere uh, by Tuesday timeframe as that heavier snow just continues to push a little bit further off from the West and reaching into the, the Rocky Mountains now into portions of uh, Wyoming here, but that flooding rains and heavier rains continue for Southern California. So those are some much needed rains for really a good chunk of at least early part of next week. And so let's take a look at the temperatures. <laughs> I mean, I showed you the temperatures this morning and you know, the winds turn around and it's almost like deja vu all over again. I mean, this is December folks. And by the time we get into Wednesday, man, we're talking 68 record high temperatures across the nation for a lot of the major cities. And 
almost 90 degrees in South Texas, almost almost unheard of 10 days before Christmas, right? I mean, widespread 80s in Texas, 70s in Oklahoma, 70s in Kansas, the 70s reach all the way to Iowa. I mean, that's high temperature, 71 degrees in Iowa for December 15th. I mean, you know, widespread 70s. There's not much colder air to contend with typically. I mean, these are all more or less, you know, where you're supposed to be cold this time of year, but that's not really, you know, cold for December standards. But all the colder weather will be out west where we do have some freezing temperatures, and that's where the snow is predominantly going to be flying and the higher elevations uh, just because we have a lot of, you know, record high heat to contend with on Wednesday. But the transitions is going to be happening. And what I'm a little bit concerned about as we do have this warm front, you saw the surge of uh, temperatures that are going to be rapidly, you know, increasing all the way into Iowa because we got this warm front. And that's more or less uh, lifting some of that moisture that I showed you and going to be increasing the dew points in this region. While we do have that trough coming in off the west, that's bringing the heavier snows. So you got that, that, uh, point of flexion here where we could have some severe weather kind of breaking out as we get into the day on wednesday especially into the wednesday night time frame because we do look see you know some of the dew points trying to surge in that in that arena going into you know oklahoma again going into missouri going into parts of iowa here and parts of uh eastern nebraska eastern kansas here so there's going to be that boundary here you can see the sharp gradient between the dry air and the, and the warm sector we could be looking at some severe weather starting to break out uh in this region so in parts of say oklahoma parts of kansas parts of you know eastern uh nebraska here going into iowa southern parts of minnesota here there's going to be a, a kind of a, an area here of concern that those some of those storms could turn severe as we get into the Wednesday night time frame into the overnight hours or that you know ahead of that warm front and the warm sector before the cold front uh impacts you from from the west but as we go into Thursday that cold front will be flatting out and so this is what I'm concerned about because this cold front Although I do feel that severe threat will lessen by then, but you could see some strong, stronger storms and some heavier rains moving back into the tornado stricken areas. So you got some nice weather to contend with currently right now for the cleanup efforts. But as we get into Thursday, we've got that cold front and we could be looking at some heavier storms and if not almost some flooding rains in some of these areas into Arkansas, uh, portions of Southeastern Missouri, Southern Illinois, Southern Indiana, going into you know Western Kentucky, Western Tennessee, a lot of these areas that got hit hard from t t tornadoes. Uh, we could be looking at some heavier rains uh, moving back in the picture and then that just kind of intensifies on Friday, as that cold front kind of stalls out, I mean, it's going to be kind of stalling out in this region. So we could be setting up a boundary here and to, you know, northeast Texas going into Arkansas, you know, south, southeastern Missouri, southern Illinois, southern Indiana. What, you know, a lot of these areas, this basically exactly where you got hit hard from the tornadoes. This is where I'm deeply concerned. It's these temperatures are going to be well above, you know, average. Here's your freezing line right here with the, with the red, the red shaded area. So, uh, but as you take a look at the overall map and where that cold front could be by Friday, you can see it more or less stalls out. That's an indication where you have these blues and reds here. And then you get what they call overrunning conditions. So as it overruns, then that's the separation from the warm, the warm air on the south side, the colder air on the north side, but it's going to be spreading the moisture on, over on top of the colder air, but that's going to set up some heavier rains, again, extending, and it shows you right here where, this, where, that, where that boundary is, is going to be. So that's why I'm kind of concerned, because yeah, there's the setup by uh, Friday, and looking at the map, you know, you're talking places like Oklahoma didn't get hit with the tornadoes. In fact, you actually need the rain in Oklahoma City and in portions of uh, North Texas, where I do feel the rains are going to be coming back for your area. Uh, of the country but as yes that as you go into arkansas with some hev those heavier rains and the and the tornado stricken areas but as we go into that saturday time frame again 
that cold front just more or less stalls out. It finally starts to push. And as it pushes, you're still gonna have that boundary. So you're talking possibly a three-day event into Thursday, Friday, and a Saturday, right along the tornado-stricken areas where we could be looking at some stronger, stronger thunderstorms and then heavier rains at times. And but you can see where the red the red line is where the freezing conditions. The reason why this map is even hinting at some blue and some snow, because I, again, like I mentioned, it's an overrunning setup, but it's not like going to happen. It's not going to snow. It's just a model, you know, showing it might have a little transition, but there's not going to be much. There's not, it's not going to be, it's going to be chillier, but not cold enough to snow. <laughs> Just look at the red line is well to the north of this. So it's more or less a false echo. Uh, Cause look at the temperatures as you go into Saturday, it's chilly. You know, we're talking, you know, you get colder conditions in Texas now. You rapidly go up to 80 degrees on Wednesday, and then boom, you go right back down with those roller coaster temperatures again. So highs of in the low 50s, we might not even get out of the 40s in uh, North Texas on on uh, on Saturday with those overrunning conditions and a chilly rain, kind of a, a kind of a nasty day technically, uh, a chilly December kind of raw like day, high temperatures in the 40s, but with all the cloud cover and everything, we're not expected to drop below freezing or anything because all that cloud will just kind of hold hold uh, the the warmer or at least the warmer. You're not going to be able to drop that much at night essentially. So as we get into that Sunday time frame, that cold front continues to push. So now it's probably clearing much of north and northern Texas, getting into parts of central Texas. So now southern southern Texas is going to be getting in the rains, places like Houston, going into Shreveport and Louisiana. But you can see where the there's not much colder air as far as like freezing freezing temperatures are concerned. The boundary is well to the north. And then where that is, there's not much precipitation to, to work with either. So, but where all the bullseye is this week is going to be off the West Coast into, uh, you know, off the, the Northwest Coast where we, you know, you get that atmospheric river, though, that's going to continue. But it shifts further south now with these areas are going to be below average for much of the week. But much needed rains extend all the way down into Southern uh, California, but then they branch in, branch off into the Four Corners regions and the desert Southwest and much those drought kind of really drought driven driven areas. But what I'm deeply concerned about: much needed rains come back for Texas and actually Oklahoma. You've been dry as of late, but the setup here into Arkansas, into Western Tennessee, into Western Kentucky southeastern Missouri, southern Illinois, southern Indiana, basically the exact areas that got hit hard from the tornadoes are going to get hit hard with some flooding rains. And that's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday setup. So it's nice right now for the cleanup efforts. But yes, uh, we could be looking at a two to four inch swath, uh, no question, in those areas. And then some isolated amounts of six to eight inches is not out of the question in these areas. And well, that'll just uh, add and, you know, aggravate, you know, to those, you know, tornado stricken areas. But here's the snow. I mean, the, you, I showed you the freezing line well to the north. We, you know, it's pretty much December heat all over again. What we've seen last week with a lot of roller coaster temperatures, ups and downs this week, the heavier snows is gonna be concentrated over uh, the Cascades and over here in the, in the mountains of uh, California here into the Rockies here. So heavy snows coming back for the ski resorts, but not much into the lower elevations. And then the, the snow line this week will be extending for all the way further to the north into Montana, into Northern Dakota, uh, North Dakota, into central and Northern Minnesota, and then all the way into, you know, upper portions of Wisconsin here with some heavier snows moving back in the picture. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you for and after the storm.